Our next speaker who is joining us on stage is all about fusing passion and technology to create positive impact. Now, right now, he's the CTO at Capgemini Application Services and a mentor helping both people and companies to unleash their full potential. So today, he'll share with us some of the latest trends, tools, and methods in technology. But most importantly, he'll share with us how those advancements are going to impact the future of developers and what the future of work can look like for you. So please join me in giving me that, that happiness, that very warm welcome for Mr. Frank Vamis. Thank you. <laughs> so a lot of happy people, and that's uh, exactly what I would like uh, to see. I would like, I hope the presentation comes up. Yeah, I think something's happening now. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I skipped some of it. I would like to start with a small story, and it's the story of the moth. And the moth is a very special uh, animal, and once in Japan, there was a small bunch of moths together. And every night they saw on the hills, they saw this very tiny light shining. And one of the wise moths, the old moths, they came and said, you know, what is it? What is this all about? What is this light? We want to experience what this light is. And uh, he said, is there a volunteer that wants to go out and see and search what this light is all about? And one little moth, he raised his hand and said, well, I'll, I'll do it. And he flies over and all the other moths are in anticipating, watching what will happen. And then after a few hours, he comes back and he says, well, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but there's some kind of a temple on top of the mountain. And I go over there and there is this little thing, which is yellow and it waves a little bit and it gives heat. And, and, and I don't know exactly what it is, but it was really intense when I looked at it, but I, I don't know what it is. So all the mods were very disappointed because they only know there was this small thing, was a little bit yellow and it gave a lot of heat and it waved a little bit with the wind. And then the next evening, the moths came together again, and uh, the wise old moth said, you know, but we need to go out there again because we need to search what it is. And again, the small moth said, you know, I will go. And he went over there, and after a couple of hours, he came back again. And he said, you know, it's true. So the speaker of yesterday was, it's amazing, you know, you, you want to know what it is, but you don't know what it is. It's warm, it lights a little bit up, and gives heat, uh, and it's wonderful. And then everybody was disappointed again because they didn't know what it was. And then the third light night, they came together again, and this smallest moth of all, he said, well, I will go over, and he went over there. And two hours later, he didn't return. Three hours later, he didn't return. And they waited until the morning, and he still didn't come back. And all the other moths were in panic, and they said he didn't come back. And then the wisest of all the moths said, we don't have to worry, because once you have touched the light, you will never return. That's the story about moth, and that has all to do with technology. Because once we have seen the light on what we can achieve, and if we get a, a goal, a purpose on how we want to achieve it, we can achieve everything. And that's a little bit the conversation for today. Um, so at the end, uh, I didn't take the picture of you as a group, but this is you at the group at the end, because hopefully uh, you are here to be touched by all these great inventions, all these great technologies. But now I would like to discuss with you on how it can impact your lives, and how you can arrange that. So a short uh, introduction of myself and my Twitter handle is below. I always like to have an ongoing discussion uh, during and, and uh, after the presentation. Frank Vlamers, I'm the CTO for Capgemini Europe, so I'm in a fortunate situation to, to look in different kind of technologies. I'm a passionate firewalker, so I'm a certified firewalk instructor. So if you want to do a firewalk, uh, join me. You will some things reflect back into this presentation. Uh, and else I would like to go uh, skiing, so I'm going from fire to snow and in between. I do something for Capgemini. I've got four elements I would like to discuss with you. First, it's about different thinking. So it's about how can you open your mindset to look different at technology and how it can create impact to come up with new ideas. So actually, I hope that I will impose some new ideas where you can create new businesses or new business ideas from. The second is all about potatoes despite the fact that we will do something with potatoes in the first part. But the potatoes is all it's about meshing up. So this is Dutch, the stampot. And for me, technology is all about how can we mesh different kind of technologies into practical applications for society or for business. And I will give some examples on that one. The third is about heroes. 
So there I will stretch your challenge and your thinking a little bit on, on what are for me the heroes and why are they heroes and, and what would I like you to do with your thinking? How will it impact you as a developer? And last but not least, so what are you going to do with it? And before that, we're going to do a very exciting experiment because it's the first time that I will do it on a live stage. So uh, bear with me. So first is about different thinking. And we are so already influenced and consumed about how we look at things and sometimes we just need to open our minds a little bit because what is new to us sometimes is not new to others. And this is a very interesting video that they, it was not a, a prank or funny cameras, this is actually a surveillance camera which they put in Uzbekistan where for the first time uh, they had this escalator going upstairs and you will see what's happening. And the fun part is, look at it as a, a corporate environment. So the first people who are going to embark on this journey for the first time uh, going on it, uh, they are basically the pioneers within the corporate environments. So this lady, she's a pioneer, eh? don't underestimate it. And the fun part is, if you don't know how it works, basically you lose your, your balance. So the, the good thing is then management comes in, because once we start to fail, management stops the project. I, I don't know how, uh, how often it happens with you. Uh, we've, we've, got, we've got some younger people, also first time. And again, and my wife asks, you know, how could this happen? But you, know, you don't know what it is. This is young management. So this is already smart management, so he stops. But I all would like you to watch his feet, because this is lean startup style management. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this is the nasty manager. You think you like him, but actually he, uh, he's not that, uh, that nice. So we need to understand that the technologies that we think are familiar to us are familiar to other people. So the impact that we think we can create is not always perceived as impact from other people. So we need to do some things about it. And we need to think different in order to achieve these new kind of technologies. And therefore we need to think different with our brain. And I would like to have a very short uh, experiment, so I would like to have some interaction. So first of all, can you all, uh, all raise your hands in a vertical position, please? Can you all do that? Okay, th yeah, exactly. There are some smart people in the room because this is the vertical position. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. But I would like to have two, uh, two volunteers for, for the following experiment, which is this. Can you achieve putting a straw through a potato in less than 10 seconds? Who think it's possible? Okay, all the others that... Do I want to have one person who thinks it's possible. If you can come off stage, uh, I, I really would appreciate... And, and somebody uh, who don't think it's possible. You think it's not possible or? You think it's possible? Yeah, I've got one from the, sorry for that. So. Who, who doesn't think it's possible? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah well, you've got a very nice friend because. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So we'll do, hi, my name is Frank. Hello, Anil. Hey, Anil. Arian. Hey, Arian. <laughs> so but basically what I would like you to do is take the potato yeah. and the straw it works if you take the long side, so that's, I, I, give, I give that away. Okay. okay. So, the, so the question is, within 10 seconds, can you get it through the potato, yes or no? So uh, you say it's possible, so now we'll try it. So we've got 10 seconds, I will count. So you, you can go through this. This is a little bit, this is too difficult. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so, well, so what, what can I use? Can I, can I, can I use anything? Like, I you can do whatever you want, but it's 10 seconds and it needs to be through. So I will count down from three to one, and then you've got 10 seconds. So three, two, one, one, two, <laughs> 11, 12. <laughs> well, great. can I have an applause for these people? Because this actually, this is amazing. So <laughs> the good thing is I brought extra potatoes with me. So, <laughs> so keep, keep the straw, please. Oh, can you give me the, uh, the bag? <laughs> I didn't anticipate this kind of creativity, so you, <laughs> so you already are a hero. So t take this one, okay, without smashing the potato. <laughs> can you achieve holding the potato in your hand to get it through in ten seconds? So again, 
three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you, you didn't have a good one. Oh, sorry. Here. No, this is a good one. I just chew on it. Okay, good, good. Okay, sorry for the organization for the mess over here. So, <laughs> so three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Almost. Uh, yeah, almost, almost. Okay, take take it out. Okay, let, let let's do it differently. I get you a new straw because else you know it will not work. Just take this one. So the whole thing is, again, you know, it, actually the exercise that I'm going to tell is useless anyway because they already showed their creativity. But you only have to, to rethink one thing in your brain because everybody, and of course it, it helped that I started to do it like this, is going to try to do it like that. Actually, if you take it like this, and please do so, you take the potato like this and you visualize that the straw is through the potato. If you don't visualize that it's through the potato, it doesn't work. So basically you take it and with one big straw, visualize it goes through the potato and you smash it through the potato. Let's see if it works. Think through the potato, eh? Well, it's, it's almost there, it's almost there. I will, I will demonstrate it. Hopefully it works with me now. Ah, it's, oh, oh shoot. Well, it, got, it got this way in. Sorry for that. I got two, two big potatoes. Okay, actually you can start. You, you have to practice it sometimes and definitely it will work. Ah, again, almost there. So, actually, but it works. So what you, at least I proved else you could like do it like this. Now already can get through like this. So we only have to change certain things into your thing. Can I have, and they will practice now the whole day. I know you will all do it over the weekend. Can I give a, a, a big hand for your, your support? Thank you so much. Yeah, it's almost there. Look, look, look. It's almost gone through. But again, the good thing is you already proved that by thinking differently, you can go through the potato. And that's exactly what I would like us to do with the technology in our minds. So if I can go back to the presentation again. So it's about using your brains differently, think differently about technology. Well, what technology then are we going to talk all about? And again, I would like to show a short movie again to highlight a little bit on what we do. Because I'm a fur believer who all, who all read the book Singularity is Near. No? Well, it's a big book, so I can give you the short update. It's a book from Ray Kurzweil where basically he predicts that in 2040 we will become immortal because we can download our brains. Uh, that's the reason why he swallows 200 pills every day because he's already 60 and he wants to make sure that he gets to the two 2040. Um, so singularity is about the conversion of technology and human, human minds. We need to have three things in order to achieve that. Artificial intelligence, because we are no longer capable of continuing uh, Moore's law ourselves. We need to have nanorobotics, because if we want to manipulate DNA, we need to go to the DNA. And we need to have the genomics, because then we know where we need to manipulate and then we become immortal. Regardless religion, ethics, I will pass all those, uh, those parts. If we reach that, we become immortal. But the question is, don't we already have achieved that momentum? And I would like to show you a clip out of the series. You can find it on Netflix or on YouTube. It's uh, Black Mirror, and it's produced by the BBC. I see some recognizing faces who recognize it. it it's on the, uh, giving a perspective on what technology will mean for the future of humanity. And this uh, movie, it, it's a very sad story. It's a young couple, very happy, uh, live uh, in the countryside of the UK. Uh, she gets pregnant and then he dies in a car accident. So it's a very sad story. She's very sad. And then somebody comes up to her, you know, you can actually uh, have contact with that person again in some kind of a virtual way because you can chat with him and then we'll simulate that that's your husband. So she does it, she gets a little bit more happy. And then she says she's still not satisfied and then it goes one step further. If you look at this video, there's one small assignment. I would like you to check which technology is not feasible already today.
I blocked myself out of the house again. Yeah, I'm not going to be Sounding. Hello? Hello. You sound just like him. Almost creepy, isn't it? I say creepy, I mean it's totally batshit crazy I can even talk to you. I mean, I don't even have a mouth. That's... That's, that's just... Just what? It's just the sort of thing that he would say. Well, that's why I said it. <laughs> the fun part is, I think it's a very creepy uh, representation, but on the, fun, on the other hand, the uh, question is which technology is not yet feasible today? Any questions or any, any ideas? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, exactly. So he already says that there, there are, uh, c can you can you simulate the emotions based on the archive of the of the person? Yes, we can do that. Fun part is Google to more humanize their artificial intelligence. They are scanning 250 no uh, romantic novels. So if you <laughs> actually that's basically the thing to do to become more human. So if you want to become more human, then read 250 romantic novels. So we can do that. Voice simulation, we can do that. So that, that's sort of something. Humor simulation, we can do this. And the fun part is we can do this because all this data of ours is available. And when I had a discussion with the CIO of a large insurance company, he said, well, I've got a, a composed family, yeah, so two, two marriages, so we got children of 20 and ch ch children of 30. And when they go on a holiday, the children of 30, they come back after two weeks, take their laptop with them, and then they go through the, to the photos to talk about the holiday. His children of 20, after two months, he starts dialing them, and he says, you know, how was the holiday? Because I haven't heard anything from you back. And actually, the message is, but yeah, you follow me on Facebook and Instagram, so why should I talk about my holiday? Actually, if you die, who's going to remove you from Facebook? Who's going to remove you from LinkedIn? How the hell are you going to b get your bought Apple uh, albums <laughs> to somebody else? So we already have this kind of immortality because of some great technologies that we now have in place. So you could mesh this up. For me, I thought the technology that at this moment in time was not possible was she get called by the guy for the first time and already his face is being displayed. And then somebody with real deep in-depth telecom knowledge told me that's actually also possible. So all the technologies, everything that you have seen here will be possible in an advanced version. The question again is do we want it, yes or no? Well, the fun part is if you look at the underlying technology beneath it, which is the artificial intelligence, which is the way how we can communicate, etc., it's already in one of the coolest products at this moment in time, the Amazon Echo. And last week, Google announced that they have the Google Home, which looks like an air freshener uh, evaporator. And the rumors this week was that Apple is now also going to put a device into your room that you can play, talk to and you have Siri technology. But now let's look how scary this is. Because in particularly if I have this conversation with people that are coming from the United States, they buy everything online with Amazon. Google is envious for that because Google only knows what you are searching for. Amazon knows what you are buying. Amazon knows what you are watching on TV because you've got Amazon Prime. Amazon knows when you're at home because you've got the one hour delivery service from Amazon. Amazon knows what kind of music you have. Amazon knows what kind of books you read. But now, because of the Amazon Echo, you ask all different kind of questions, you get replies, so they also know what kind of questions you have. They know when you are, what your favorite temperature is, because it's connected to your home. 
And this is a company who knows everything and they want to sell things to you. The lesson that I learned from this is if your user experience is superior, the user will forgive you everything. If the user experience is supreme, the user will forgive you everything. Now look back at your company, your companies, etc. How unique is your user experience? I think the reason why the ING Bank, when they did their first pilot, that they were going to do something with big data, and, and they were crashed within one day uh, because everybody thought it was afraid, is they didn't have the user experience around it. If they would have, would our reaction have been different? I think so. So what can we learn from that? Uh, we need to be careful because, of course, you all know about uh, uh, Tay, uh, the experiment that Microsoft did for one day and then shut it off again. Uh, you could talk to the tweetbot, and within half a day, it already started becoming racist. So, hey, you're a racist, yeah, because you're a Mexican. <laughs> That's, uh, so they shut it down. <laughs> good thing is, but uh, apparently there's a law for that. So Goodwin's law says uh, that as an online discussion grows longer, the probability of a comparison involving Nazis or Hitler approaches a very high uh, 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 point. So we need to be careful, so we need, to, but AI is going to be in everything. All the big announcements from Facebook and Google was all about bots. And they want you to develop that for them. Open API's platform, how can you benefit from them? Well, I think this is a good example on, on how they really benefited. So IBM, you know, this is nice, uh, how we communicated through Pepper with IBM Watson. Having the ability for IBM Watson to, to, to go into the analytics and use IBM Watson for me is not the big breakthrough. The big breakthrough was I was already involved with, with IBM on a, on a very short notice. And they had a problem because they had Watson, they won Jeopardy, and nobody wanted to buy it because it was way too expensive. And then they pivoted the model. If they don't want to buy the machine, are they willing to buy the capability and the capacity? That's when they opened it up with the APIs. How can you transfer that back? What is the opportunity that a developer can get out of it? Are you going to develop the stuff? Or are you going to develop the connection? How can you make leverage of what the big companies fail to, make, uh, to commercialize and create other kinds of business models out of it? Uh, this is also a good example on how you mesh different kinds of technologies. Uh, this is a CEO. I've got a short movie about it. Basically, it uses light spectrometers to hold something very closely to something of food. It gives the light specter back and it connects to the database to see what kind of food it is. And apparently the light specter is unique. So it's like almost your fingerprint. And I got a short uh, movie on how this, uh, how this works. The technology at our fingertips can help us do amazing things. It can help us navigate the world, know which restaurant to book tonight, or know what song is playing on the radio. But when it comes to the actual stuff around us, if you're not sure or just don't know, well, you're on your own. I'm Damien. And I'm Dror. I'm excited to introduce Sayo. Sayo is the first molecular sensor that fits in the palm of your hand. It scans the molecular fingerprint of an object and provides relevant instant information about its chemical makeup. You can use it to log the chemical fingerprint, record it, and share with your friends. So you get the picture. So what you saw, it was mobile, it was things, it was big data because you need to connect to the database, it's social. So it's about merging all these different kind of technologies to build a new proposition. And now something different than the traditional Uber example. Uh, things, of course, yeah, a lot of examples here as well. Not only things, also nano. Nano will also be something which will probably be exposed through some very large corporations through APIs that you can benefit from. And I recently had a discussion and I found out there's already a 3D printer that can print nano uh, tops on, uh, on bottles so that you can actually measure with the nanotechnology what the real expiry date is. So I don't have an expiry date because I put something on a certain date into a bottle, but I can see how the chemical reaction of a good is to measure whether yes or no it reached the expiry date. Well, if you can do such things, what kind of values can, can you create out of this? And we had a discussion with CPG companies, and they said, you know, we need to do something with it, but we don't know how. So actually, there's a big business opportunity on th for that as well. This is a good example on what we did ourselves together with Disney. It's the Magic Band. 
uh, uh, for the Disney suckers amongst us that probably well known. So you can go to Disney Park, you get the band, and it's stupid simple. So it's a, it's a bracelet with RFID technology in it. So you know, RFID technology, the things that we already used back in 2003, 4. But what the interesting part is that we don't talk about the bracelet and the RFID, but it's about optimizing all the processes behind it. So it's the park admission, well, easy, I can do that with my watch as well. It's the form of payment. This is killing. If you are a family and you are there with your children, it becomes so easy to pay stuff, you know? You end up with, with loads of rubbish that you didn't want to pay for. But it's brilliant for Disney. Um, it's supply chain optimization because I can track where the people are. I can proactively start influencing whether I would like to give some discounts in a restaurant in order to pull away traffic and get a better balance into my park. All with a stupid RFID chip into a bracelet. But the invention is not a bracelet. It's about the creativity and the processes behind it where the real value is. Uh, Coca-Cola is a very good example where we work together also with them on lots of other things and they work with other companies also on, on big opportunities. Coca-Cola also created the bridge where they invest in startups where basically they said it's the cheapest form of innovation we've ever had because we give some money to startups, we see whether they succeed, yes or no. And if they succeed, well, we're successful. If they don't exceed at least, you know, it's their problem, not ours. I, I don't know. It's, it's a little bit subtle, more subtle, but it, it comes back to that. The coolest thing is in the middle which is a fridge, they had a little bit of an issue because in the, in the McDonald's and the Burger Kings and those franchises, they said, you know, we don't get enough margin out of selling Coca-Colas at, at fridges. So perhaps we should replace you. That was the original problem. And then they did research and it seems that if you want to drink Coca-Cola, a, a Coca-Cola product every day, it takes nine years to, to drink all the products. So can you imagine what the scope is of Coca-Cola? And then they said, but we still have an issue, what can we change? They came up with this invention. And the invention is that you can create your own product. So it takes nine years to drink all products, but now you can create your own. The fun part is you can create it, and if you like it, you can share it, social. It comes in your Facebook account, you get a QR code. If I'm at the other side of the world, and my friend says, you know, this is really cool, you need to drink this, I can go to a vending machine and I get exactly the same drinks. So what they get is they get tons of data because they know what your Facebook account you have. So they know who you are, what your demography is, what your age is. They know what kind of ingredients you like. So perhaps they will come, not come up with a new drink, but at least they can see what kind of ingredients will appeal to which kind of audiences, thereby creating free R&D. So it's big data, mobile, social. And now the fun part is you can only do this because of Internet of Things. Because if I once get a coat with a brilliant drink and I go over there and one of the supplies for the drink is not there, I will be supremely pissed off and it will never do it again. So I need to secure that it's always there. Well, I don't know whether you have a printer at home. Uh, you all suffer from the same issue that uh, yellow is empty and you don't get it exactly. So the cool thing is they have an IoT layer to measure all the different components which are inside of the stocks and they have full automatic replenishment behind it. It's a major success. Again, if you now talk to CPG companies, the only thing they are looking at, how can I mass customize stuff? Can I create my own ice cream flavors, whatever? What kind of data can I pull out of that? These are the things that you can work on to create new values. It's new experiences. I think the majority of you should know this. It's the coolest company in the world. It's of course Magic Leap, eh? raising 1.6 billion in two years' time without having a working prototype. So it's the dream of every, comp every person that wants to have a startup. If we are going to have these kind of emerging experiences as well, how can we integrate it? And we already have examples where we work together with Boeing to train pilots. Uh, but, but can you even imagine, and I, I recently heard Dan Rosegaar, he said the invention that it's not created but I'm waiting for is that I can put on glasses, walk through the aisle of a supermarket and immediately everything is highlighted what, I'm, I, what I can and cannot eat based on my allergies. Well, the cool thing, it's already there. But how are we going to bring that back into good products for the marketplace? We need to finance it different. I don't know if you have a Netflix account, please look at Capital C. Uh, it's it's a, good, uh, a good way on how to create movie and the best way to tell it is the guy 
who is playing the main part in the, in the movie. Here we go. One of the coolest things by far about the crowdfunding is that it really gave us the opportunity to launch something that we wouldn't have had before. Traditionally, you go to this business guy and be like, hey, business guy, we're going to take off our clothes and run around and act crazy. Do you want to give us some money for this thing? And they'd be like, no, you guys are crazy. You get to throw it out there. And if you get accepted, then it's like, oh, we got a company. Oh, OK, what are we going to do now? In crowdfunding, money but the cool thing is, and this is a lesson learned again for you, you all know Kickstarter, you know, you, know, you know it. But what are the lessons that we can learn from it? Again, it's free R&D. Major companies are now trying things on, on, on crowdfund platforms to test whether something is viable in the marketplace. Second is, it's creating a fan base. So this guy, the crazy guy, who actually created the best product in the world, the wine sock, so you can keep your bottle of wine warm. No? I thought it was a great opportunity. <laughs> So what he did is he got the fan base, so he got the money, he started it, he, he got some machine capability in order to produce it. And then you see in the movie or in the documentary, he comes to, uh, to the office and uh, there had been a burglary and all the, all the machines were taken out of the office. And he's completely sad and basically he tweeted to all the followers who, who, who financed him in the first place and he said, well, actually, I think we need to close business because, well, we got robbed and everything's out. Within two weeks' time, his fan base that he created started a, 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 a gala event, evening, whatever, uh, where they had a big party, because that's in the, in this atmosphere, uh, in, the, in the kind of things that you would do for such a company, and they got all the money back again. So it's testing, it's creating loyalty, um, it's, it's doing stuff, perhaps under a different brand, to test out stuff, so how can you leverage that? It's not only about raising money. Crowdfunding is just, you know, it's, it's, this is the importance of raising money. It's the testing and creating the fan base, which is way more important. But now we need heroes. So how are we going to do this? And this is about give meaning to stuff. So what we really like is think big. Again, I think uh, we're all watching now in, into, the, into the autonomous driving car, etc. But if you look to Elon Musk, he all started it because he's afraid for the Earth. He wants to have the Tesla car in order to create a better space. He wants to have SpaceX not to drop uh, satellites into, into, into the uh, atmosphere, but he wants to go to Mars. So he thinks very far, and then he starts breaking it down. It's, it's this very scary picture. It's Mark Zuckerberg. It's about connecting the whole world. And what am I going to do to connect the whole world? 12 years ago, eh, he started. 12 years ago. And now he's the sixth richest man in the world, but with a purpose. On the other hand, this is also a very scary movie uh, picture because it also shows that uh, Mark Zuckerberg basically is the only one who he didn't lock into, into his own platform. <laughs> so you can also look at it like that. Um, these two young guys, you know, Serge and Larry, you know, they came with this dream like, okay, how are we going to unlock, uh, unlock information to everybody? And I had the privilege to be in California last year and they gave a presentation about innovation. And they said, innovation for us is not that the whole company, that everybody has 20% free time to work on innovation, but we look always at the whole problem. So the whole problem is basically, if users can't spell, it's our problem. If you don't know what to form a query, it's our problem. If they don't know what words to use, it's our problem. We need to solve that for them. If you can't speak the language, it's our problem. That's why they started with Google Translate. If there's not enough content on the, on the web, it's our problem. And if the web is too slow, it's our problem. This is also what I read last week, which I thought was so interesting to hear, is Mark Zuckerberg, he made sure that every other Tuesday in the, in the Facebook headquarters, he squeezes down the internet speed. At some companies where I give this presentation, they said, well, our, our boss does it all the time. But, <laughs> <laughs> but at Facebook, they do it on Tuesday, and they do it deliberately. Because the message is, not everybody is privileged to have the internet speed as we have. So you better develop solutions for that kind of speed. How are you going to do that as a developer, to install that kind of thinking into your organization? Also with Google, you know, I, I had, I had a, a, a great discussion with a very advanced company who are really leading edge on digital. But I challenged them, I said, are you allowed to have a fucked up Friday? 
Or are you still talking about lessons learned? At Capgemini, last week, I skipped the lessons learned and I said, I only want to have what's my favorite fuck-up moment of the week. Because lessons learned, everybody falls asleep. Lessons learned is incremental. Major fuck-up is the thing you will never do again. That's something you learn from. And then they said, yeah, that would ruin your career. So, well, then you still have a long way to go. These guys, you know, it all started with Sean Parker and, and, and Sean Fanning that, that started to thinking different about what do we want to achieve. And the fun part is, particularly uh, Sean Parker, now he made en enough money with Facebook. But Sean Fanning, you know, he didn't make the money of Napstar that, that Zuckerberg made from Facebook. But he wasn't in for the money. It was about creating new meaning. And it's not only about the, the big gurus or whatever. And I, I watched this very stupid, but I watched the TV show with Ivo Nier uh, last Monday. But there was this amazing lady who was showcased. And she's blind. And she said, you know, I'm going into the world and I'm going to make sure that in poor countries where blindness is being seen as a punishment from a higher being, I will make sure that I will create schools, etc., to make sure that they can start reading. And can you imagine with the technology that we have today, how we can boost her in her journey on how to create meaning. Or this guy, we all know, you know, creating the solution to get the plastic out of the sea, 19 years old. He's not there for the money, but I bet you that he comes with some great ideas, which definitely will lead to monetization later on. And Guy Kawasaki, the guy, uh, uh, Apple fellow and the marketeer at the beginning of the Mac, he has a very strong saying on that one as well. Entrepreneurship is about making meaning. Many, many people start companies to make money, the quick flip, the dot-com phenomena. And I have noticed in both the companies that I've started and funded and been associated with that those companies that, that are, fu are fundamentally founded to change the world, to make the world a better place, to make meaning, are the companies that make a difference. They are the companies to succeed. My naive and romantic belief is that if you make meaning, you will probably make money. But if you set out to make money, you will probably not make meaning and you won't make money. So my first thought is you need to make meaning. That's so you need to make meaning. And again, it's not only if you want to start your own company, but it's also going back to your own corporate environments perhaps. That's at least what I would like to do. And the only thing that you need to do is to break the patterns into your mindset again. And we need to break through our negative thoughts in order to do that. And this is the exciting part. I already told you I'm a passionate firewalker, but in firewalking you also learn some other tricks. And uh, I would like to have one volunteer that will work with me on an ancient ritual, and that's by breaking the negative thoughts on behalf of all of us to make sure that we really start believing that everything is possible if we set our mind to it. And that's an error break. So I would like to have a volunteer. Come on stage. Hi, Frank. Hi, Anik. Hi, Anik. So, Anik, what we are going to do is something that the Indians did. So, I think you're very proud. Because if you come a little bit on stage, because I, I will show you. Because there's one thing in our body which is already so developed over time, which has a very specific function. And this is the hole here in your, in your throat. Do you know what the function is of this part of the throat? Do you know? No? A anybody knows? Millions of years of evolution has led us to the fact that we have a point in our throat that is specifically designed to break arrows. That's the only purpose of this part. So what I'm going to challenge you is to break through all the negative thoughts <laughs> on behalf of this group so that we really establish everything, that we can create meaning as developers, which perhaps is not a thing that the outside world will look to us as they think of technology. So keep standing over here. So they're really good arrows, so they're not, so, so yeah. you still want to volunteer, huh? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so they're a little bit bendable, but actually I can tell you, so it's, 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 so, yeah, you, you still want to try it? Yeah, it's, okay, so good. So the thing that we're going to do, but you have to help, because you need to have energy. So the, this, this does not help with energy, like anything with meaning, it doesn't help if you put intention and energy behind it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to instruct you very carefully because I, uh, <laughs> I don't want to have uh, accidents. A lot of people, when I told this this morning in our company, they said, well, at least we will reach the news if it doesn't work. So, <laughs> so what you do is we put it over here. Yeah. 
and you need to have intention. What you do is you breathe in and you breathe out. You breathe in and they will shout and that's something that we, that we do in the ancient tradition is Puma because we, we use the energy of a Puma. So I will start and then you need to follow because you, know, you need to help her. She does it on your behalf, eh? so you need to give her a little bit of support. We say Puma, you breathe in three times. She said, so. And on the third time, you hold your breath and you take a step forward and it will break. Yeah? Okay. So. If you, you're still confident, huh? <laughs> she has never done it before, at least not to my knowledge. No. <laughs> okay, good. So, just to make sure, because that's the only tricky thing, is that it doesn't point away is that I created a small hole over here. So, yeah, I put it over there. Exactly. Lean a little bit forward, so one, one foot, I would stand a little bit like this. Exactly. Good. Yeah? Yeah. Let go. Yeah. And now, I really need your help. So, it's boom ma boom ma Boom ma with your breath. Boom ma boom ma boom ma boom ma Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 okay. How does it feel? Uh, strange. Strange? strange. <laughs> strange. It didn't hurt. It didn't hurt. So well actually what I'm going to give you, I don't know where the other part is, I think it flew away, so yeah, uh, good. Okay, what I what I want you to do is wrap it around, because this, you have to do this on behalf of us. So what I would like you to do is bind it like this, yeah. wrap it around, put it somewhere in the, in, the, in the earth or whatever that you always see it, and you know that on behalf of this group, <laughs> you, you, break through, you, broke, you broke through every negative thought and we can achieve everything. So yes, thank you very much. And give her a great applause on what she achieved for you. Eh? <laughs> thank you so much. So to... to <laughs> That's really cool to do on a live uh, event. So thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, to go back and to finally wrap up. So we need to do things differently and we do it different. So I already told you, you need to go to Netflix for some of the documentaries. You also need to have, uh, you need to have HBO Go to watch Silicon Valley because it's the greatest show on earth uh, where, they, where they, they make jokes out of the startup community. But if I look at it, these, this is the new world. It's the guy with the never forget button it's not the save button, it's a floppy disk. <laughs> he is the owner of the house, so he gets 10% of the shares. It's the CFO, but the three guys over there, they are the company. How are we going to internalize with our large corporations, large companies, that we don't have development, that we don't have 10 different kind of IT departments, but that we have small teams that start building stuff? That's your future. How are we going to do that? It's about lean startup. It's about failing fast, fail many, fail forward. If you haven't read the book, read the book. This is where I challenge every big corporation for. And again, the word fail is already the first objections that we need to break through. Buy an arrow, break it on the throat of your CEO. <laughs> and then we end up with the example that I like. Docker always gives that as the best example because it takes some time. Uh, ING had one release every nine months, now they have 16 releases every week, which still is not the 2,000 every day that Amazon has. But it didn't come overnight. It was a five-year journey. Never forget that. But we need to get there in order to, to create the speed and create these kind of mashups that we have showed in the past. So if you were here, you are already awesome because you chose to be here. You chose to be exposed to all these kind of great inspirations. Now for you, the only question is, have you been touched by the light and will you shape your new future? Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you so much, Frank. We can ha I'm, I'm going to hand this over to you. I feel like you're, you're, oh. you're, you're going to be the catch box talk. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to open the floor for a few questions and we'll take the first one from the audience. Frank will toss you the catch box. You don't need to break it on your gently, neck. Gently, gently. Just speak yeah. directly into the catch box. Um, any questions to kick us off? Let's see. No questions? All right. Question for you, Frank. Yep. Using Campus Party, this huge space with thousands of people gathered, uh, what advice would you give for people to start now with this and adapting this new thinking? Well, I think uh, the, the first thing is never think out of one technology. Always look at something uh, which Tom Peters would say you're supremely pissed off of. 
So what is the thing that, you know, have boggled your mind that you can't understand that everything happened like this? If you would like to solve that, how can you mesh different kind of technologies in order to do that? So don't start from the technology. Start with something either you are supremely pissed off of, of which you really want to preserve, but you are afraid it will get lost. Um, how can you solve that? And I noticed you, you don't think like the normal CTO, I'm, I'm, I'm gathering. So okay. what, what was that moment for you, that, that spark moment that made you begin to shift these, this, this thinking? Well, actually, uh, this is a very <laughs> funny story. I had my firewalk training course in, 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 uh, in, uh, in Scotland. And at that moment in time, I had a different role within the Capgemini group. And I, I was a little bit under stress and not so happy, etc. And then... Uh, and then I did a firewalk, and I f on, on the intention of the firewalk, I shouted out, I want another job. <laughs> the first thing that happened, and you have to know, a universe is very specific, eh? so you need to be specific to the universe if you want to get something back. <laughs> so. so what happened is, uh, my, job, my boss took me from the job that, that I had at that moment in time, but he put me on another job I really didn't like. So <laughs> So what I learned is, Careful, yes. yeah, so the moment came that I learned you have to be very specific if, if, if you do something with meaning, <laughs> but be very specific on what you want. You, you had a question or no? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh almost. It's, it's soft and plushy, so don't worry. It's not like dodging an arrow, don't okay. worry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Martin. Now for Hi, Martin. Uh, what is the role of Cap Germany in all of this? Because you have a really big company with uh, 180,000 employees exactly yeah so well I think our role is changing and that's the thing that I that's perhaps the role that I want to challenge and also perhaps not the typical CTO for a group we need to change fast uh, because we working with large corporation and I, I recently had a discussion with uh, with our European boss and he said you know but you know what we see is a lot of companies are shrinking in the Netherlands you know Philips being split up blah 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 a lot of companies are putting their centers of IT outside of the Netherlands Unilever he said, so, so what are you going to do? And I was in shock. And I said, but there are some very large companies in the, in the, in, in the Netherlands now growing. Ball.com, Bookings.com, which core thing is IT. So if we don't get there, and if we don't get into the, to the new world of IT with our clients, then we're lost and we only maintain the legacy systems, which get smaller and smaller. So the, the, the change that we are now making, and we have some very interesting things going on, is that we have said, yeah, of course, L large maintenance of large companies, you know, still need to do that. But we are now, we have created a, a, a lab and a co-zone where in lean startup mode, we bring clients together, we show how we work. We, we learned that because we first we threw in consultants in our co-zone and we expected them to work startup and then everybody opened their laptop and started to work like they did in the past. And we, we learned over a period of six months by continuously changing stuff, how to really become a startup within a large company. The fun part is if we now have clients over, they want, don't want to go to the, to, the, to the innovation lab, they want to go to the co-zone because they said, this is what we want to become. And that's basically the thing that we now try to do as well, in the meantime, maintaining also all the other stuff. Modeling the behavior yeah? you want to okay, see in the world. That's a future business model. Well, I think our future business model is, is I think we will move more towards uh, either become a platform partner ourselves, so, for instance, for DevOps, we have created our own DevOps platform so that clients don't have to think about all these different kind of technologies, but do it on top of our platform, and we will help you assist with capacity as well. Uh, but it's also IP, so uh, we, we've got a cloud-based uh, call center solution where you don't pay a license, but you pay per, per number of calls. You know? So we, we are progressing in that change as well. Business services for us, where we do business services on top of IT platforms will become, I think, the biggest thing uh, in our business in the future. Definitely. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Thank Great you. question. We've got time yeah. for one more if you want to throw the catch box around. All right. And you don't have to toss it back up. You can bring it back up in the end. Let's give one more <laughs> round of applause to Frank, okay. please. Thank, thank you, you so much, much, Frank. Much appreciated. Thank you very much.